loom knit the reverse Edelweiss stitch, either flat and in the round. Now this stitch is uh, inspired by the Edelweiss stitch is actually a happy mistake when converting. The Edelweiss has a flatter look. It looks like the Edelweiss flower that's found on the Swiss Alps. But when we make one little design change, it makes these beautiful outward bumps and it looks like mini tulips to me. But I'm calling it the reverse Edelweiss because it is just a simple change from the original. It's a nice and stretchy design, whether you make it flat or in the round. This is called the Elizabeth hat. It comes in five sizes and we'll have a link to that pattern down below. But in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make it in a flat panel and in the round today on Good Knit Kisses. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. To get the written pattern for the reverse Edelweiss stitch, flat and in the round, click down in the link in the description below. And if you'd like the Elizabeth hat pattern, again, it comes in five sizes, that link is down below as well. We do also have a tutorial for making the hat and a separate one for just making the decreased crown, especially if you're gonna work on this flexi loom here. You do not have to use the flexi loom that's shown here for the Edelweiss stitch. You can use whatever loom you want and whatever, uh, whatever yarn you want, as long as the yarn is appropriate to the loom you are using. Today, I'm working with a medium four weight yarn and a 3 8 gauge loom. This is 21 stitches that I've cast on. You can cast on in whatever direction you want. I'm going to work the stitches uh, that are um, kind of the specialty rows from left to right in this video, but you can also work them from right to left. Now, when I get to working this stitch pattern in the round, I'm going to work from right to left in the round continuously. So you'll be able to see it from either direction. So if you'll just um, skip down to the timestamp down in the description below, you can jump to either one. So if you're right or left-handed, um, you'll be able to see which direction makes it easier for you to work. Okay, so uh, this is a multiple of two plus one, meaning your stitches need to be divisible by uh, two, or you can do a divisible by four, either one, but then you need that extra stitch. So if you're working with one of these looms, just make sure um, the plus one is working on one of these pairs here. You don't use uh, all of them. Okay, so um, you're gonna start by casting on, and then you're gonna work your first row. Uh, if you're working the direction I am, I cast it on, and then made my first stitch on the right side and you're going to go ahead and knit row one. So row one of this four row pattern repeat is knit. So go ahead and knit all stitches. This is a cast on of 21 and I'm not gonna show the cast on here but we do have video links down in the description below. Go ahead and pause your video, work on Row one, I'll meet you back up at the other end. See you in a moment. All right, row one, you just knit all stitches. You can use the U-wrap knit that I did or a true knit. You could use an E-wrap, however, I have not tested it, but do not use an E-wrap on row two. So row two starts off, we're going to knit peg one, just a U-wrap knit stitch here. And then the next stitches are gonna be worked in pairs and we're going to use a true knit stitch and a purl, but we're gonna be working two stitches together. Uh, so we're going to be moving peg one over to peg two. Now I'm saying it in pairs. I know that this is technically peg two to over three, but just bear with me. We're gonna work in pairs and I'm gonna call the first one uh, one and then the second one two. So peg two now has two loops on it. We're gonna take our working yarn, go behind the first peg, go around to in, um, in front of the second peg and Act like you're gonna U-wrap knit, but we're going to go below both of these stitches on the bottom and scoop downward and make a loop. And that's going to be like a true knit stitch, but we don't take these old ones off of the loom. We just move this new stitch over to peg one, place it on here and tighten up with our working yarn. Now we're gonna bring our working yarn down below peg two. Okay, just like this. Just hold it with your thumb down here and then use your tool to come down through both of those stitches, grab that working yarn and pull upward to make a loop. That's a purl two together. So we just did a knit two together and now we're doing a purl two, two, two together and that is in the same stitch. So we're gonna take these old two off and take our new loop and put it on peg two and then tighten up your stitch. So that is a knit two together, purl two together in the same stitch. So let's do that again. 
we're going to pick up peg one, move it to peg two, put the yarn behind peg one in front of peg two, pull that loop down through the bottom two loops, move the new loop to peg one, tighten it up, put the yarn down below peg two, put our tool underneath to pull up a loop to purl two together, take off the old two loops and put the new loop on peg two and tighten up. There you go. So now you're gonna work all the way until the end. The last two here will be a pair together. Pause your video and meet me at that point. We'll see you soon. Row three, we're going to be working a knit stitch all the way across. So go ahead and you wrap knit all the way across. Pause your video and I will see you for row four. See you soon. All right, row four, you're gonna be working in pairs to start off with. So you're gonna save your very last stitch for a knit stitch, just like you had on row uh, one, it's just shifted. So go ahead and start moving your stitches by making the first stitch um, moved over to, or placing the first stitch over on the second one. Go ahead and wrap the second one on the top, pull downward to make that new stitch, place it on peg one, tighten that up, Put your working yarn down below peg two, go underneath those two loops, scoop up a loop, take that old one off and put the new one on. Generally the first couple stitches are kind of loose so make sure you're not like dropping those stitches off as you go. And then continue working in pairs. This one's easy because well on the flexi loom you can see that they're in pairs of colors so it's really easy to see. And then when you get to that very last stitch, you can knit that stitch. So it's shifted over and you have this um, type of stitch where it, every other one has a little bump here. So when you look at it and you see a row with all these uh, special stitches here, you can see that the next one kind of jogs over by a stitch. So a four row repeat is this row, a knit row, actually it's a knit row, then you have this row and then you have uh, a knit row and then you have this row. So that's four rows right there. This is a four row repeat. Also, this is very stretchy stitch. So be sure and kind of tug on your knitting when you're um, looking for how many inches that you've knitted or you may have to take it off of the loom. I would wait until you have a good amount uh, there and then pull downward on your knitting. So continue repeating those four rows and you have your reverse Edelweiss stitch flat panel. All right, let's work on in the round. Working in the round for the reverse Edelweiss stitch, you wanna make sure you have a multiple of four. If you're making a hat, such as the one I'm doing here on the Elizabeth hat, I have it in multiples of eight. This particular one is 88 stitches, and of course it looks funny because it's on the flexible flexi loom like this, uh, but it is a very stretchy stitch and it will go down. So you wanna start off by making sure you have a stitch marker. We're gonna work in, uh, all the way across in the round by knitting all stitches. I'm gonna go uh, clockwise. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise and uh, just go one round all the way around and pause your video and I'll meet you back up for round two. All right, we've finished round one, knitting all the way around with the U-wrap knit. And now we're on to round two. Now make sure your stitch marker is in place on peg one, we're going to knit peg one. Now, um, we are going to have um, a multiple that's even, of course, and I'm knitting this peg, but we're gonna start working in pairs. When we get to the end of this round, you're actually going to also work peg one again, but in a pair with this last peg. So the last peg and the first peg will get worked. So uh, we're gonna do just as we did in the flat panel. We're gonna be working with the next pair of stitches together. In this case, we have a light purple peg and this dark purple peg. We're gonna call the light purple peg peg two, or actually peg one. And then we're gonna move that onto peg two. Okay, so we're moving it in the direction we're gonna be knitting and go behind the empty peg with our working yarn behind peg one, wrap it around peg two. We're gonna go underneath these two stitches here and pull downward to make a loop. Pick that loop up and place it on peg one. And then go ahead and tighten that up with the working yarn. Now put the working yarn underneath peg two. We're going to uh, go down and pull up a loop to make a purl two together. So we did knit two together and purl two together in the same stitch on this peg two. And now we can pull off these two loops 
and then we're going to take this loop and place it on peg two and then tighten that up okay you don't have to pull it super tight or anything but you do want to make sure it's snug so peg one and two are snugged up and we've worked in the pair knitting two together first and purling two together next and all in the same stitch so now you're going to continue working in pairs all the way around go ahead and pause your video and we'll meet you back up for um, working these last two stitches together all right again we're going to pick this first peg up put it on peg two put your yarn to the back of peg one wrap around peg two go underneath these two loops pull downward to make a stitch place that stitch on peg one and tighten and then put your yarn down below peg two and you're going to scoop up a loop from both of those take the old two pegs off or um, old two loops off and replace with that new loop and tighten up and continue in pairs so go ahead and keep doing that pause your video i'll meet you back up for the last stitch and the first stitch See oh quick tip uh, i can move a few stitches at a time at first before i start working them so uh, I can go ahead and move over a few of the stitches before I start working them, but then they get tight after I do, um, sometimes after just two of them, um, or this one I was able to get um, four of them moved over. So you can go ahead and um, get those set up that way so that when you start to uh, knit your stitches and work with them, you can do a few back-to-back uh, -back before moving on to the next ones. I hope that makes sense, but that's a quick little tip there for you. And... There you go, <laughs> and then place that on there. All right, so um, continue working, pause your video, and I will see you soon. I do wanna interrupt for a moment and say, when I'm working with this, I lean it up against my body on my stomach, and this is actually how I work it, so I thought somebody might uh, enjoy seeing how I do it. So I've got my yarn kind of wrapped up in here, kind of like I'm when I'm crocheting, put the yarn uh, on it like that. Of course, I don't have my stomach to kind of keep this in position, but just so you see how I do it. And then I pull this off and replace and then do it again. So it's a little bit different than when I'm uh, on the table here teaching. So I don't actually hold it the same way. Some people think, oh, wow, how does she do that on the table? Sorry. I'm actually having a harder time doing it this way because I don't have it against my body. But if you see, I kind of pull downward and then wrap it around my uh, my hook here. As long as my the tip of my hook was in this little groove, it works really well. And then I'll pull it off and replace and then tighten it up. Okay, one more time. Put it over here. I'm going behind and in front. And if I could show my stomach on here, you'd see that it actually is a lot easier. Um, it's just hard to kind of show that on uh, camera here. But when I pull down with my finger, I can wrap it around like this and then pull up. Let's see if I can do it here again. Go down, wrap it around, and then pull up, and then take that off. I usually do it with my hook there. Okay, I hope that helps someone. All right, we are at the end of round two. I have one more stitch here. We're gonna place the last stitch onto your first stitch and complete this pattern of the pairs. So we'll go behind this uh, last stitch here and go ahead and do the true knit stitch. Pull down, we're making a loop, putting that loop onto our last peg, pulling it tight, go underneath, pull up a loop, from the very first peg, get around my stitch marker here. So pull up a loop here to purl those two together, take that off, put the new loop on, tighten up, and now you have completed round two. Now round three, we're just going to knit around just as we did on round one. You don't have to knit the first stitch again because it's already incorporated here, it's already been knit. So just start by knitting over. So go ahead and work your knit round Pause your video and I will meet you back up for round four. See you soon. All right, so at the end of round three, we've completed our knit round and now we want to work 
round four, and that's the fourth round in our four round repeat, you're just going to be picking up the first stitch and placing it on the second and then working in pairs all the way around. And so each one of these obviously is uh, one of these links in this flexi loom uh, shows you um, two light purple, you're gonna work those together, two dark purple and so on and so on. So you just follow it all the way around and it ends in a pair. So it works perfectly. So um, just continue again, we'll do it one more time. Gonna pull a stitch downward, working those two stitches together, moving the knit to the first, and then we purl these same two stitches together and then pull off the old stitch and put on the new. So um, continue working those rounds for as long as you need for working in the round and um, you've got your reverse Edelweiss stitch. So I will tell you that uh, this is a very stretchy stitch and when this first started, uh, this was very stretched out. If you start making a hat this way, it looks like it doesn't work, but you actually really have to pull downward on here to get that extra tightness out. And um, you'll see it kind of relax down this way. But if you're going to be measuring from this loom, because a lot of loom knitters measure from it instead of taking it off, go ahead and grab your yarn, uh, really what your loom really well down here firmly, and then pull downward to kind of relax that yarn before you try and measure it in a spot if you're measuring from the tip of a brim to the top up here to make sure you get that measurement. So just keep that in mind. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna have way too big of an item later on or way too short. I hope you enjoy learning about the reverse Edelweiss stitch. To get those patterns for flat or in the round, be sure and go to our blog or get the Elizabeth hat pattern in five sizes from baby to adult. Um, men's and women's sizes. This is actually the women's size. I did go a little bit longer than that. Uh, recommended that I have on there just so I can have a little rolled up brim, but um, it will have this decreased uh, crown or shaped top on it as well. So I hope you uh, join us soon again at Good Knit Kisses for more tutorials. Be sure and comment down below and catch me on Instagram. Why don't you post your stuff there and tag me. Tag me at Good Knit Kisses and I'd love to check out your work. We'll see you soon. Happy looming. Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.